everyone, welcome back to The Rustic Wife, I'm Alana. It is a beautiful spring day here in Ontario, Canada. It's May 8th and I am at my mother and father-in-law's place and I'm going to be foraging for fiddleheads. So I'm going to bring you along with me and show you how I identify and forage wild fiddleheads. Now because I am heading across the river to a little island, these boots are not going to suffice. So I have my chest waders <laughs> that I'm going to put on. So make sure you have the right equipment if you're going to go foraging, if, it's, if you're near a river, because you don't want to get a soaker. There, I'm ready for anything. So before I get started showing you how to identify a fiddlehead, I just want to talk about making sure that you know exactly what you're picking before you consume it. So do your research before you go out and get yourself a reference book, preferably something that's fairly local to your area. And also, if you are going to be going onto private property, make sure you get the landowner's permission first. If you're going to be foraging on public or crown land, as we have here in Canada, you want to make sure you know the rules about make sure you know the rules about harvesting on public land. So get all that straightened away before you head out. You want to make sure that you have a basket or a pail. This basket's a little bit big, but I, I carry everything in it. And of course, my reference book. I like to always have a reference book, as I mentioned earlier, about making sure that you are certain of the plant variety before you pick it and consume it. You also want to make sure you have proper footwear. I have my chest waders on, as I mentioned earlier, because I will be wading across the river that is a little bit taller than my rubber boots. But if you're in an area that it's the water's not so deep, just a pair of rubber boots will be fine, because it also could be mucky this time of year. So you can see I've made it to a little island here, which I totally could have gotten to if I crossed the footbridge and came through the woods a little bit, and then I would have just needed rubber boots. I wouldn't have needed to go to the extreme of my chest waders, but oh well, I've got them on now. So I am surrounded by fiddleheads. So before I identify them for you, I want to tell you where you're going to find them. Um, usually the eastern parts of North America, I'm sure they're in most of North America, but primarily the eastern parts. I'm not too sure if they are in other countries, I'm sure they are, but I'm just not familiar where. Um, but you can see I'm surrounded by water here. They like to be um, in part shade. They like wet areas, so along riverbanks and streams, that is where you're gonna find these. A fiddlehead is the unfurled frond of the ostrich fern, and they call it the ostrich fern because when the leaves are completely unfurled, they resemble the plume of an ostrich. And when you will find these fiddleheads really depends on where you are, what region you're in. Uh, some people may get them in April and some people may not be able to harvest them until early June. So it just really depends on where you are and what region you're in. And like I would mentioned, I'm in Ontario um, and it's May 8th and they're just starting to produce for us now. So this is a really good example of the um, ostrich fern plant. You can see that these fronds are from last year. They're, they're dead and they're brown. And I'll get to those ones later. But if you look down here, if I move some of this stuff away, you can see the fiddleheads emerging from the crown. And that's what, they're, that's what the base is called. It's called the crown. So this particular crown here of the ostrich fern um, it can potentially produce two different fronds in a season. And you can see this one has two, and I'll, I'll tell you why. So this one here that's emerging right now is the fiddlehead. And once that's unfurled, it will produce a sterile frond. And that can get up to about five feet tall. And about two weeks later, this crown can, and obviously did last year, produce um, a fertile frond. And these ones are generally about 12 to 20 inches tall, and they're, they're much shorter than the fiddlehead frond. So these ones are the fertile ones, and they produce spores. So once the fiddlehead has unfurled and produced the sterile frond, and it's gone through the growing season, later on in the fall, these ones will die back right to the ground. But if the crown has produced a fertile frond, it'll stay brown and upright until the following year. And that's what this one is right here. So that is the fertile spore producing frond of the ostrich fern crown. Some crowns actually don't produce the fertile uh, fronds, but some do. 
The ostrich fern can be produced by the spores, but usually it grows more quickly um, from underground rhizomes. Now to identify the ostrich fern, you want to look for a smooth green stem. I'm actually going to pick this so you can see it. So you can see the stem is a lovely bright shade of green and it's smooth but on the inside there's a u-shaped groove almost like celery kind of does remind me of a celery stalk another indication that this is the fiddlehead of the ostrich fern is this brown papery scaly covering on them and of course the color which is a lovely dark shade of green so between a smooth green stem, a U-shape indent on the underside of the uh, stem, and the brown paper covering, you know that that is the fiddlehead of the ostrich fern. So now that you've identified the fiddlehead and you're ready to harvest some, you want to make sure that you are harvesting from a crown that can handle taking half of the fiddleheads from. You want to make sure you are a sustainable harvester and a responsible one too. So these crowns should have at least four fiddleheads per crown if you're going to harvest from it. Um, if there's two or three, I would leave it. It could be um, an immature plant. It also could be just uh, a plant with a weak crown. So you want to leave that so that it could get bigger or potentially get stronger. Um, also, when you do harvest, just take about half. So if there's four fiddleheads just take two because the fiddleheads that are left behind is actually food for the next year's um, growth. So you just want to make sure you keep that in mind when you're harvesting. And you don't want to wipe out any plants or species and again you could be uh, one of many people that are out harvesting so you just you just don't want to be greedy. So I'm just about to harvest some here and before I show you that I just want to give you a warning that fiddleheads should never be consumed raw. They can potentially be toxic and cause food poisoning. There's been lots of cases where people have gotten sick from eating raw fiddleheads. So they should be um, boiled for at least 10 to 15 minutes and then sauteed or baked or put into soup or whatever. That's just the warning on several websites, including the Government of Canada website. So just don't consume any raw fiddleheads. Okay, so I'm gonna harvest some here and you can see this crown has one, two, three, four, five fiddleheads on it. You wanna look for ones that are bright green. I'm gonna pass on the ones that could potentially be discolored or unfurled. You wanna make sure that the end is quite um, tightly curled. And you also wanna make sure it's at least two or six inches tall. So these ones look good. And again, you only wanna harvest half of what's on the crown. So for this one, I'm just gonna take two and these look nice. So you can use a knife if you want, or you can just snap them off. So that's a nice one. And this one is starting to uncurl a little bit. So I'll take this one down here. And I've left three for that crown so it can produce food for next year's harvest. And you also want to make sure that, you know, they're, they're a good size. There's some little gaffers over here. These little guys, I mean, they've already uncurled too much and there's only two on that crown. So we know that that is immature or a wheat crown. My guess is the, the size of it means that they're quite, they're quite new. So I'll leave those ones alone. And same with these ones. Too small. You can see this crown here, it's already started to unfurl. But these ones over here look pretty good. So these ones down here. This one's more tightly curled than that one, so I'll take this one. And again, that brown papery covering just comes off when we wash them. In this little cluster here, it's not tall enough. They're just emerging from the crown. There's quite a few here. I can always come back in another few days. As it stands now, they're, they're too short to pick. So I'll leave those ones alone. 
So that's my harvest for today and that'll be enough for a few meals and I can always come back and pick some of the ones that haven't grown quite tall enough today. I don't know if I mentioned earlier but as you've probably gathered they call them fiddleheads because they resemble the end of a fiddle or a violin. When you're done harvesting and you head home you want to just run these under some cold water to get that brown paper covering off and then as I mentioned earlier you should boil them for about 15 minutes and then saute them, fry them, bake them in a quiche or put them in a soup. Some people freeze them. I have never frozen them. I'm always worried what the texture is going to be like after. So you, you can freeze them. I think you should probably parboil them first before freezing, but um, I'm not too sure. Once you're done washing them and you're not going to eat them right away, I usually just put mine in between paper towels and then put them in the crisper of the refrigerator. So remember when you're harvesting any wild edible, take what you need and make sure you eat what you take. You don't want to waste any of this precious food. So my fiddlehead harvest is done for today. I'll probably come back in another couple of days when more have popped up a little bit taller. And then I'll probably have had my fill of fiddleheads for the season because it's always a treat. If you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing and good luck on your fiddlehead forage. And I'll see you again next time.